All righty, Cadet Lovell, Cadet Lovell, come on down. Let's put there, here we catch everything. You can you know, sit here and you'll record, put 30 points for them and then put stars for everybody who responds. Get it, finish up with everybody who responds and put them in the star over here so they participate. Cadet Lovell, come on down. Let me uh, get you on close content there so they will love you on that. Everybody please be quiet and recording. And you're going to be over there next to the whiteboard, right? Yes, sir. Are you uncomfortable yet? Yes, sir. Great. <laughs> I want you to be uncomfortable. Okay. All right. We got a timer? Hello. We got a timer, Cadet Todd? All right, great. You are in charge, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Wait, what is our topic, sir? Jeez. What are the topics? Anything you want or... School. What you would like to change about the school. This is the easy one, okay? I don't pick the topic for you. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so my topic is what I would change about the school if I could change something about it. Um, I would like to change that we only have like a few ROTC classes because like we had school cutbacks. So I would want that to be that we had more ROTC classes and you could have it for like core classes because like I always do a lot better in like ROTC curriculum and I think it'd be more fun if you could like have the leadership and yet still have core classes because like we had like last year we had history and that was a core class and this year we don't have it but we could have had like government or something like that for a core class as history or not history but as a ROTC class. Um, I feel like it'd be better for kids who maybe don't have that leadership and some of us need the leadership because some kids in the school don't follow rules, they do not listen, and they need the rules. They really do need the rules. Um, I feel like this would benefit us because it makes you want to achieve more. And if you are going to go into any branches of the military, you know what you're going to need to do. And you're going to know how to follow the rules. So, and it would give you a basis for even like just going into the real world. Because you're going to have that respect. You're not going to be a rude person. You're not going to walk into a job interview not knowing what to do. So, I feel like it would help us become better citizens. And it would help us just like better the world honestly because if we were smarter and if we had way more respect I'm sure this would be like a way better place we wouldn't have as many wars we wouldn't have as many people dying we would it would be better <clears throat> education is key man <laughs> okay you you going. keep going um, keep going so the classes we could have would be like all four <laughs> classes so like you could have like English with like, and it doesn't just have to be like Air Force Junior ROTC. It could be like Marine or like any, any branch of the military. Like we would extend it that way. Like everybody got to choose what they wanted to do. So it would be like open for all of us rather than just, I mean, if you don't want to do Air Force when you're older, you could choose a different military branch. Thank you for going. In conclusion. In conclusion, I think that having more core classes for ROTC curriculum would benefit us all. Can I be done now? Yeah, you can. No, you can. Okay. Ooh, right. Where are you going? Uh, you have to have. Oh, yeah. Sit down. Thank you. Now, Lillian, who has to give her one? I tell you a lot of kids. Have you given criticism? No, no, I haven't. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> you had some really good wait, points. Wait, you have to say cadet uh, cadet, the cadet level. Cadet level. I think you did very good. You had very good points about following the rules, <coughs> and I think that this suggestion could truly benefit our school. However, I counted, and you said like <laughs> at least. Like, um, no, 25 times. No, he didn't. Count I can't. Yeah, I can't. No, you said I counted best. She said, right, like, and at least five times in one sentence. Work on that. 
and you'll do a lot better with public speaking. I think you did a very good job overall. I was trying to, or thank you, Cadet, and I'll wait. Simpson. Thank you, Cadet Simpson. I will take that into consideration, and uh, thank you for that. Cadet Hoffman. Oh, okay, well, I thought what you did was a very good speech. Wait, wait, wait. you've already given, someone else has to do it. But I really so sit down. Yeah, I know, I'm sorry. Um, Cadet Reigns. Oh. Yeah, you have to give her the okay. Cadet. Cadet Lovell, I thought your points were very good on keeping people in line, but you it seems like you didn't come prepared and like you weren't fully like keeping your speech like through the whole time. Thank you, Cadet. Brains. Brains. I will take that into consideration. And next time I will try to prepare better. Cadet Rossman. <laughs> Cadet Lovell, I believe that you did very well on your speech and I heard you very clearly and understood your main points. However, you need to you need to have better organization skills and like as Rain said, come more prepared for the speech and the time. Thank you, Cadet Rossman. I will take that into consideration, right. and next time I'll try to be more clear and be better with my speech. Yay! Um, Cadet Hoffman, you can do your speech. Did you? Yeah. Okay, um, Cadet Ross. Yeah, I know Melissa Nick and Rossman have to do it. So, Rossman. We only have an Air Force ROTC. We don't have Marines. I don't know what I'm saying. Like, the, I really like, she's in. That's another thing. Yeah, we can talk about the Guys. Guys. Love you. Alright, I'm Cadet Rossman, and, I, and my speech is on if I was the administrator or tyrant slash leader of the school. <laughs> I would make it so the school days started later on and ended <coughs> at the same time. <coughs> Here is my main point for my reason. reasoning. I know I'm not the only one to get up at 4 o'clock in the morning every day just, to get, just so I could eat breakfast and get ready without having to rush to school and actually arrive there at a reasonable hour. So in conjunction with that, I have to do homework every single night and at least until 10 o'clock, then immediately get to, get to bed and asleep or I'm gonna have a terrible day the next day. All right? Also, the next, also the classes, they would have to be shorter for the school day to end at the same time. But, that, but there is no real problem with that because most, most classes end at a, um, end or like most of the lessons are over in the first half an hour of class and everyone's just kind of sitting there just doing whatever so yeah um home uh, um, homework there wouldn't be there would be like the exact same amount of homework so it would just be like pretty much the same only you wouldn't have to get up at oh dark hundred <laughs> Alright, um, I know that most people will, will agree with that because I know no one likes to wake up at any t part of the morning that's not like sun up. So, yeah. Plus the um, American education system kind of like runs on caffeine at the moment and then like everyone's drinking coffee and energy drinks which are super bad for you because caffeine and your heart rate's like all high and you're gonna have a heart attack and then the school's gonna have to pay for the medical bills and no one wants to do that. So if the school just lets you sleep longer so you can wake up and like at the, like wake up later in the day, ready to go, the sun's up, everyone's bright and cheery and smiling. <laughs> and like no complaints. There's like everyone's everyone it's a win win situation. So in conclusion, school needs to start at a later school needs to start at a later time, say eleven, 
end at the same time and well I mean, that's pretty much the main points and and that was my pretty much conclusion. <laughs> Okay. Um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could that last one stay up here? Yeah, Thank you. Okay. Um. <laughs> Could I roll one? I think you're already given. You've already given. Everyone has already nice. given it. Shh. Everyone quiet. You got called on. Respect. Could I roll one? I like what you, I like what you said about how it would be better for everybody to. Start school later, but what about early bird kids? If they had an early bird, well, it would just be moved over. Like instead of starting at seven, it would start at ten instead of eleven. <laughs> okay, but then also, if wouldn't it? Yeah, I like what you said about how if the class, if it started earlier, we would have more time to do homework in the class, correct? Well, no, the class would be shorter, so. The class would be shorter, so it would just be half hour classes to end at the same time and start at 11. But then most lessons are over in the half an hour. Most people are taught in the half an hour. It would be like Wednesday. So would more people, so would they have more time to get their homework done in class instead of having to do it at the night, during the night? It's a half an hour class. You just, you, it would just be, it would be beneficial because you would wake up earlier or later in the in the day. Okay. Yeah. All right. Good at Rossman. I think it's a great idea. I'd like it, but um, the problem is you can't just change our school because federally you have to have so many school hours sitting in class. So there's, it's kind of not really thought through considering we have to have so many in-class hours. Like, I don't know if you know what's going on with APT thing. The seniors have to stay in class for APT to get their amount of hours. So to change that, you wouldn't just be changing the school, you'd be changing like the system completely. So. It's already been tiring to begin with. Ben so. <laughs> Rossman, you're not responding properly to this constructive criticism. How are you supposed to respond? Thank you for your thank you for your criticism, and I will may I will be fair. I will be sure to improve upon it. My speaking skills. No, that if not was this constructive criticism. One. What was this constructive criticism? I will be sure to understand the like all the points of and finesse behind the school year, and to not upset the balance in the next time. Okay, you, you got to play the game here. His point was exactly right. Your system was a non-starter because of the federal laws. And he has the exact right point. But you need to accept the constructive criticism, not talk back, just like you talked back to Cody. That was bad. You're not playing the game. Cadet Arietta, how come you did not uh, change, you did, uh, talk to him about this? You did not play the game. You didn't accept constructive criticism. You started arguing back. That was not good. You understand? I apologize. I understand. Okay. And I apologize. All right, I'm saying Cody had a good question. He had the answer to this. You know, your suggestion is great. I appreciate the suggestion, but it was a non-starter, you know, practicality-wise. All right, sounds good. Next. Thank you very much. Give a round of applause. That um, Hello, I'm Cadet Mosnick, and is it okay if I talk about like the two points? Yeah. Topics are kind of the same. Yeah. Okay. Um, if I could change the school for a day, be in charge of it. First thing I would change is we all know about uh, freshmen and sophomores can't leave campus for lunch. We all know this. Um, I disagree overall with this rule because I remember being a freshman and having the freedom to go off campus was very new to me. Coming from middle school and having to stay there wasn't all that fun. And then I waited a whole three years knowing that the I, freshman year I'd get to go off campus and go everywhere and Taco Bell, yay. And when I finally got freshman year, it was awesome. And then sophomore year, they couldn't do that. I kind of felt bad for them. And I wouldn't just open up the campus, just let them go free. It would kind of be a different way, make, be a safer way for them to go. Um, 
I would let freshmen and sophomores leave campus if they were in the same car as a junior or senior or someone that has a parking permit on campus or is parked on campus. This way, um, there's still the same amount of cars, but less people will stay in the cafeteria, so it's not as clustered, congested, and stuffed, and people will be more comfortable. Um, they just have to find a junior or senior friend. Um, that's really all I'll say about that topic. Second topic is also with the shorter days, like Cadet Rossman was talking about earlier, but I wouldn't have them as short. And what I would do is instead of just making them short and then having, say, the same amount of summer or amount of like fall break, amount of days for fall break and summer break and spring break, um, we just have shorter breaks and shorter summers, and then also have more school days, but the days themselves would be a bit shorter. So that way we can make it the same. We have still the same amount of hours uh, that we need for school um, overall. And, but they'd just be shorter overall. And like that Rossman said, we, the teacher would just teach for a certain amount of time and then give you your homework. And you go to the next class and you can just do it all at home because you would have the extra time. But two, two and a half hours just to do homework. And then, um, uh, in conclusion, again, if I was the administrator, I would change the, uh, the rule that freshmen and sophomores cannot leave campus for lunch by letting them go with a junior or senior or someone with a parking permit. And second, I would make the days, the overall school day hours shorter, but have more school days and shorter summers. Do I need to keep going? Yeah, 10 okay. seconds. Um, that's really... All I have to say about that, but that's what I would change in five hours in history for a day. Okay, questions or comments? Academics? Um, Cadet Moore. Cadet Moore. I think that your. I have to say his name. Cadet Melissnick, I think that your speech was overall very well said. Um, I didn't really find anything that was incredibly um, worth noticing, um, that was wrong with it. Okay. Um, so I think you did a really good job. Thank you, Cadet Moore, for your construction. Um, Cadet Smith. Um, your points were well thought out and well executed, but I think you could have said um a little less. Thank you, Cadet Smith. I noticed that and I will take that into consideration. Cadet Barrios. Everyone has, so we're quiet. Oh, okay. Cadet Smith, I think that you did speak really well. It was very well put, but you can. Thank you. Um, Cadet McKinney. Okay. Um, I'm gonna. I'm Cadet McKinney. Uh, I'm gonna talk to you guys about why basketball isn't really just a sport to me. Um, I have a twin, and some people know this. And we were born two months premature, and so. Because of that, we had to go undergo a ton of physical therapy. I think we were doing it for seven years. And I was at an AMPM program for a really long time. And two of my coaches decided that they really enjoyed basketball. And I asked them one day if I could play, which I couldn't. I was probably one of the worst people on the team at the time. But I, I tried, and I kept practicing and practicing. And throughout all of my physical therapy, I didn't know, because I was really young, that basketball was actually helping me with my physical therapy. And during the entire time, physical therapy is not fun. It's probably one of the worst things ever. But because of basketball, I was able to go through all of it a lot quicker than most people should have. And as for my twin, she was mountain bike racing. So she also went through physical therapy really fast. Um, being pre born two months premature, we both ended up I don't know, we both ended up um, being really small. We were two pounds when we were born, which is like, we fit in my dad's hand. 
and we were in the hospital for about a year before we could go home. And with the whole basketball and for her mountain biking, we were actually able to be in this room or in this school and not have to be sitting in another classroom trying to learn because we couldn't do what everyone else could. So in my opinion, basketball and sports and all that to some people might look like just a game. It might look like something that's fun and that they enjoy doing, but to other people, it is really something that has a lot of meaning to someone. Because basketball to me isn't just a fun game. Like I love basketball, I enjoy it a lot. But to me, it's also an opportunity to see that there are a lot of things in life that are hard to get through, but there's also a lot of things that you can get past. And with basketball, I got past the hardship of not being able to do what everyone else could do. I was able to go run around and have fun and enjoy life with my friends and not have to sit at home or sit in physical therapy trying to get my, trying to learn how to walk for the rest of my life. And basketball to me is kind of a symbol of being able to get past everything. Because a lot of people have a lot of stuff that go goes through their minds and a lot of it affects a lot of people, but it doesn't have to. It can always, you can always get through something that may look difficult at the time, but if you think about it, it's not that hard. There's a bunch of people, like we lost two students last year to suicide, that if they would have sat and thought about it, they probably would have been still been here, or there, if there was someone that was still here, that you can just get through anything, no matter what. So I guess the whole reason I'm saying this is just because you have a problem, it doesn't, it doesn't mean it's the end. You can always get past it. Wow. Thank you. Then McKinney, yeah. uh, your speech was really good and it moved a lot of people, um, but you weren't clear on your intro or your three main points, like as in other cadets they said. speech was really good, but you, like, didn't look around that much, and I think you could do that. Thank you. Fine, I'll take that into consideration. All right, everybody give a round of applause.